Welcome to Accounting with Madam Wombi. Today we are going to look at an inventory valuation method that is last in, first out, LIFO. So LIFO is an inventory valuation method where it is based on the assumption that the stock that was purchased last is issued first. So the last in goods are the first out. So when we come to issue goods using LIFO, we are using the prices of the last batch to be received in the store first. So stock valuation, therefore, under this method is based on the prices prevailing or the latest prices of commodities that were last received in the store. So here simply what you're doing is that the last goods to be received are the first to be issued. Therefore, the prices of the issue reflect the most current prices in the market. So closing stock, therefore, is carried at the oldest cost. Rather, the closing stock this time reflects prices from the past because the goods that were received first have not yet been issued. They are still in the store. Therefore, the closing stock is uh, out. Uh, it's from the oldest stocks reflecting the oldest cost. The advantage of this method is that it tends to be based on the current market prices, which is good when there is inflation. And uh, it is advantageous because the production costs are going to be reflective of the current market prices of commodities. But the disadvantages of this method is that you're going to have uh, your value of inventory being valued at very old prices that maybe are no longer applicable in the market. It may also involve tedious calculations where prices keep on fluctuating, and this is common between all the methods. You can also find that this is also a disadvantage of FIFO. And again, another disadvantage which is common, again, between FIFO and LIFO is that the comparison of one job with another may be very unfair or difficult where you're using different methods. One more disadvantage about LIFO is that it is outlawed in most countries and also the international financial reporting standards do not recommend the use of LIFO. So uh, to do a question, you are going to look at a question where uh, as I projected, there were purchases of goods on 1st January, purchases of goods on 3rd January at different prices, issue of goods on 5th and so on and so forth. So I would advise her to have a look at the question as uh, we discuss the answer. If you have not followed, uh, you should first of all maybe also check out part one, which is FIFO, to be able to have a better understanding of how LIFO is done. So to answer our question using LIFO, we need to prepare a store's ledger card uh, in the same format as we did for FIFO. So you're going to have the date column, a column for the receipts, a column for the issues and a column for the balance. For the last three columns, you're also going to have the quantity, the cost per unit and the amount. The cost, quantity, cost per unit and amount and so on. So to begin our question, you can see that on 1st January, we purchased 10 units, a shillings 10 each. So we're going to record this as a receipt. So you're going to record 10 units at a price of 10 each which gives us shillings 100. After receiving, we have to update to the store, the balance. So the balance is also now reflecting the units in the store, which is 10 units, at a price of 10, a total amount of 100. That is simple for the purchases. You just record the receipts and you update the balance in the store. So again on third, we purchase 12 units at a price of shillings 11. So 12 units are purchased, therefore we are receiving at a price of 11 shillings each, a total cost of shillings 132. After receiving, we have to update the store balance. Now in the store, we are going to have two batches. One batch that was received earlier on 1st of January, so we are bringing that one forward. One batch of 10 units, received at a price of 10 shillings each, total cost of 
100. This is the batch that we received on 1st January. We have just brought it forward because it is still in the store as that of that January. Now, the one we have received, we're also going to update in the store. We have received 12 units. This batch is at a price of 11 shillings each at a total cost of shillings 132. Now, what is in the store now is two batches. If we combine them, we are going to see that the total quantity is 22 units in the store from two batches. And uh, at a total amount of shillings 232, that is what we have all our stock in the store as that of that of January. Now, when we come to issue, we are issuing on uh, 5th of January, we are issuing 20 units. At the point of issue, this is where now the issue of the last tin first out comes in, LIFO. So we want to issue, and the assumption here is that the price of the last goods in the store is the one to be used to issue first. Rather, the last goods in the store are the first to be issued. So among the two batches, the one received on January 1st and the batch received on January 3rd, which is the last in, the last in is the one that was received on 3rd of January. The batch of 12 units is the last in. So it is going to be the first out. So it is the one we are going to issue first. So you can see here when you come to the issue, we are going to first of all issue that last batch. So we are going to issue the 12 units at a price of 11 shillings at a total cost of 132. And since the production department, they want 20 units, we, are, we still have to issue eight more units. The eight more units that we are issuing are going to come from a previous batch, the batch that was received on 1st January. So the eight units now are coming from the batch that was received on 1st January. That was a batch of 10 units. So from the batch of 10 units, we are taking eight units to issue. And uh, they were at a price of 10, so we are going to issue at a price of 10 at a total cost of 80. So we can see here now that the total issue is 20 units as required here, issue of 20 units at a total cost of 212. Now what about now our store's balance? Our store's balance we can check and see that the last batch of 12 units that was received has already been fully issued. It is what we have issued here, the last batch, because we're using last in, first out. It has already been issued that. So out of 10 units from the batch previously received on January 1st, we have only taken eight units. So there is remaining two units of that batch. It's an old stock. There's two units remaining of it at a price of 10 at a total cost of 20 shillings. So this time we have used last tin to be the first out. So after that, we are going to see that there's purchases of 15 units at a price of 12. So uh, we have 15 units being received at a price of 12 shillings each at a total cost of 180. So in our store, we remember there's only two units from a very old batch that was received on 1st January. Each one of them valued at 10 shillings at a total cost of 20. Adding in the new batch that just came in on January 8th, we are going to add the batch of 15 units valued at 12 shillings at a total cost of 180. So the total now in the store, we have 17 units. 15 from the new batch that just came in and two units from a previous batch that was not fully issued. So total we have now 17 units valued at shillings 200. That is at as January 8th. Uh, on January 10th, we are issuing again, we are issuing now 10 units. Let's come and check here. 10 units, what do we have in the store? We have two units from a previous batch and we have 15 units that just came in on January 8th. Remembering that we are using the last in, first out. We are going to issue the 10 units from the, from the last batch. So we are going to issue the 10 units from the latest batch of 15 units. So we are going to take the 10 units from the 15. And we are going to issue now at a price of 12, uh, which is a total of 120. Now, you may be wondering why are we not issuing the first two units that are still in the store? Because we are using last in, first out. We are going to issue at the price of the most latest batch 
in the store. And what happens to our balance? We still have the two units from the previous, uh, we still have the two units that were previously there at a price of 10. These two units, remember, they have remained from the batch that was received on 1st January. And then from the 15 units uh, of the batch received on 8th, we are taking 10 units, so there is remaining 5 units. So from this batch of 15, there is remaining 5 units. So in the store, we are going to have 7 units at a total price of shillings 20. So the 10 units was fully issued from the latest batch, of which we are saying from the latest batch, there is a remainder of five units, which is now in the store, and uh, also a previous batch of two units that was not issued. So total, we have seven units at a price of 80. That takes us to January 15th, where purchased, we purchased 20 units at a price of 11. So the 20 units, are going to be received in the store so we are going to have 20 units at a price of 11 a total amount of 220 here it's straightforward you just multiply and then we update in the store now in the store how many batches do we have we have two units that remained from january 1st stock we have five units that remained from the january 8th stock and now we have the 20 units that have just been received so two units have remained previously Five units have remained previously, and now we have received 20 units. So the total number of units in the store is 27 units, at a total cost of shillings 300. Each batch is at its respective receipt price, how much it was received at. So you can see now that the stock is reflecting odd, odd prices. Then finally, on uh, 31st of January, we are going to issue 17 units. Now, despite having two units, five units, and 20 units that just came in on uh, January 15th, uh, we are not going to issue the two units or the five units. We are going to issue the 17 units from the batch of 20. So we are going to issue from this batch that just came in. We are going to issue 17 units. And we are going to have a remainder of three units. So we are going to issue the 17 units fully from the batch that was received on 15th. So we are going to issue 17 units at a price of 11 at a total cost of 187 and now the balance in the store is three units from that batch, five units from a previous batch and two units from a, a previous batch. Now, if we analyze this closing stock, we can see that the two units have remained from this issue here, where at issuing 20 units, we issued 12 units first, according to last in, first out, and we took eight units from the batch received here on January 1st, from which we have issued eight units, having a remainder of two units. Those two units have been carried forward. They are still in the store as at the end of 31st January. They have been carried forward. Again, we look at the five units where the issue came. When we issued on 10th, we issued from the latest batch of 15. Again, out of 15, five units remained in the store. That stock has been carried forward. Five units every time have been carried forward. They are still in store as at the end of 31st January. And from our latest issue, we have issued 17 units from 20. Three units have remained at a price of 11. So we can see that the first two reflect very old stock. They reflect stock that was received into the store uh, earlier that has not yet been issued. And this explains why this method is disadvantageous because it is going to end up having a lot of old stock as part of the closing stock. So this is how you do LIFO. That is last in, first out. And uh, I advise that uh, you may also look at part one of this video, which is FIFO. If you found this video to be useful, kindly like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.